people think that if they get it, realization, it's going to be a bigger ego, a better identity, okay? <laughs> the me is going to get grander. <laughs> <coughs> and it's so far away from that as to be laughable, okay? One doesn't get a bigger identity with more bells and whistles, okay? <laughs> It deconstructs into that permanent is. Okay. And I love to see, like I said in the thing at the bottom of the video, I said, well, I love to see that uh, me Sargadatta, and I, this is the thing I get challenged on all the time. You're not sweet. You're not this. You're not that. If you were a real teacher, you would be X, Y, and Z. Well, I think you could say that Nisargadatta is the real deal, okay? And he's as far away from this calm, loving, sweet uh, being that you're going to get. He's very fiery. And his thing is just to throw these facts out. That's it. It's like, come on, get it. Okay. <laughs> this is the way it is. Just hear it, okay? That's it. <laughs> no argument. <laughs> Mr. Gadata is definitely a character in his own right. So, um, yeah, no, each teacher has their way of doing it. The, the teaching here, you know, it's a confrontational thing. If you're holding on to something, there will be some confrontational thing. And everybody thinks that when, when one gets point blank, it says, why are you holding on to this? Why are you, you know, that all of a sudden you're abusive. You know, if you're not holding their hand and patting them on the head and saying, oh, you're so sweet, you're going to be okay. You know, if you challenge them on something, all of a sudden you're abusive. Okay. Nonsense. Nonsense. Like this guy says, <laughs> he said it was in the room, he said it was scary. <laughs> okay. I'm not half as fiery as Nisargadatta is. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Although I can get uh, point blank honest in assessment. Okay? And that's what it takes to break through. It's not about patting somebody on the head and telling them how wonderful they are and it's all going to be okay. You know? and sympathize with them, and empathize with them, and help them in their poor me dramas, that's not going to break through to anything. That's only securing and solidifying this drama, trauma, ego story that they've continued to beat the drum for. Okay? It's not going to help them in the end. Okay? So again, you know, part of the path is confronting and it has to be confronting your own mind and illusions and identification. Like Ramana said, you watch and find out what am I? That was his. Well, I've said rather than what am I, I don't like that because that um, it's not the way that the teaching is given here <clears throat> because in this society, if they say, what am I? They're going to pull up all these ego things and coverings that they've got. Okay, so I say better to say, what is this I? And watch the mind. The, the I is constructed by an attachment of mind to body form and to the divisionary happenings. So what is this I? Watch the mind. One has to, in order to watch the mind, one has to be able to come to a point where one is not caught up in every second. So one begins by doing one thing at a time and learning how to allow the mind to slow a bit, how to be in observe, observation mode rather than being caught up mode. Okay. So somebody was asking today about how to get to realization, how to get to liberation, how to get to moksha. Well, it's a, a whole 
path. It's a whole internal journey. One has to give up the externalization, like Nisargadatta is trying to get this guy to understand. You are caught up in all the I drama, all these things the I wants to chase, all the things in the divisionary world. As long as your focus is externalized, this is why he's trying to get him to understand, as long as your focus is externalized and you're chasing those things, you're not going to get to what is prior to that. What remains when that falls away? Okay, the focus has to be internalized, letting go of chasing the things of the world. To look, to find out what is prior to that, what runs like a thread through that, which what sustains that, what makes it possible, yet is not touched by any of that. Okay, <laughs> so this is where he's trying to lead this person, but this person is just, you know, he's not getting anything. I can see at this point he's still absolutely clueless, trying to put it in the framework of something you read in a textbook that you can pack and take away and think about. Okay, not going to get it that way. Um, one has to actually start the journey, internalize, have Kundalini awakened, so that it starts regurgitating all these things that are in the subconscious mind and in the seven layers of consciousness for it to be seen and confronted and uh, gone beyond. Okay, that's the path. <laughs> Liberation, moksha, is gained when the illusion and delusion of maya breaks. Okay, that's when one goes through that death before death and goes into that resurrected state, as one could say, if you're speaking biblically, okay, <laughs> or that if you're doing uh, Buddhist, you would say you become awakened, okay, and if you're going with Nisargadatta, you would be in that permanent, um, I think more, he says more of that permanent sleep state, that state which is prior to dreaming, okay, that state which is just simply aware and in that cognition of is, or becoming that linga, <clears throat> okay, becoming that linga form, okay, which is beyond form, formless, that light beyond lights, um, okay, so... <laughs> I'm going to leave this here and go back to watching the rest of Nisargadatta's satsang and enjoying his fiery nature. <laughs> it's great. It's kind of like, just get it already. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like that. When one deconstructs into realization, it's all one sees. It's the reality. It's like, you open a bag of potato chips and you eat it, okay? It's it's just there. One doesn't have to think about it. It just is. And it's like it's so plain. It's just right here. It's right in front of you. It's, you know, the essence of your being. It's, it's you know, it's right there. So close. Yet you have this feeling of such separation just because of this uh, gravitating toward all the externalized drama. Okay. So, Namaste. Have a great day. Good morning, everyone. <laughs>